G'day everyone, Percy here from toptechskills.com. In this tutorial, I'll take you through the Ansible command module. The Ansible command and shell modules both allow you to run commands on a system just like you were logged into the shell. There are some differences between the two modules and I'll go into some of them in this tutorial. As always, there are time codes in the description if you'd like to jump ahead to any of the sections. And there's a full in-depth article on toptechskills.com about the command module, and you'll find a link to that in the description as well. All right, let's jump in. The first thing we'll do with the command module is run the most basic of command line tasks. I'm going to create a new task here called ensure file exists. Now I could be doing this with the file module and in general you should be using the most specific Ansible module for the task you're trying to achieve. But in this case we're practicing the command module so let's use that. I'm going to run touch tmp test file. What I expect to happen when I run this playbook is that like running this in the shell on the system, we should have a file, an empty file here at temp test file. This is succeeded on both hosts and down in the output we do have a warning saying consider using the file module with state touch rather than running touch. Now as I said before this is generally good advice, in this case we can ignore it since we're practicing the command module. Let's run over to those systems to check if that file exists. If I run lstmp, you can see that our empty test file has been created by touch. Let's check on Ubuntu as well. And yes, we have our test file on Ubuntu as well. So this is how you use the command module in the most basic of ways to run a command on a system. What I'd like to do now is show you the differences between the shell and the command modules and why you might want to use one over the other. Let's say for example we wanted to print some output into a file. If we were logged into the system we might use something like echo hello world and we would use the shell redirect operator to redirect this to a file. Now let's redirect this to test file 2. If I run this playbook now what I expect to happen is the output of echo hello world to be redirected into a temp test file 2. This is succeeded on both hosts so let's go over to the hosts and check if they're there. If I run lstmp here, you can see that we only have test file. There's no test file 2. Maybe this is system specific. Let's check on Ubuntu. lstemp. And no, here we also only have test file. There's no test file 2. Let's debug this task and work out why this is happening. To do that, what I'll do is I'll register a variable. I'm going to register command output. And what we'll do in the next task is use the debug module and output the variable. So the variable there is command output. Let's run this playbook again, take a look at the output and work out why this is failing. So what I can see here in the output is that we have our command, echo hello world, this looks all fine. But what I can see down here is that we have some standard out printing. Now usually if you're using a redirect into a file, there should be no standard out. And what I can see here is that it's printed this whole string rather than do something with it. So what's actually happening is the major difference between the command and the shell modules is that the command module has escaped all of these characters. We can't use any of these special shell operators because they're escaped. They're treated just like a regular string. Let's run this again using the shell module and we'll see what happens in that case. This is running against both hosts and in this case I expect it to succeed. If we look down at the output, what we can see here is no standard out, which is what I'd expect. Let's go over to the system and run lstemp again and you can see that yes we have test file and test file 2. Let's check again on CentOS and yes we have test file and test file 2. If we cat the output, let's run cat temp test file 2. We can see that we have our hello world string. So that's the major difference. If you ever need to use one of these shell operators like the redirect or a pipe or something like and, you have to use shell. If you use command it's going to be escaped. But that's generally why you want to use command by default. Because it's escaping all of these special characters, it's going to be safer. The command module is going to be more secure and more predictable by default. So if you don't need any of these special characters, you should be using command by default. And if you do need them, switch to shell. What I'd like to show you now is how to run the command module in a different directory. I've created a command here called touch test file 3. Now there's no path in front of test file, which means that touch is going to create this file whichever directory the command is run in. Let's create a new directory. I'm going to create a new task here called ensure directory exists and we'll use the file module. The path is going to be temp and I'll call this testdir. The state because we want to create a directory is directory. Now what I'd like to do is create this test file 3 inside this test directory without prepending the file path to test file. The way that I'm going to do that is by setting args. So this allows us to set arguments to the command module and the argument that we're going to set is chdir which stands for change directory. 
What we pass in here is the directory in which the command is going to be run, and I'm going to pass temp testdir. Let's run this playbook now, and what I expect to happen is for temp testdir to contain a test file 3. That succeeded on both hosts, and let's go over and take a look if that actually succeeded. For on ls temp, you can see that we have our testdir that got created by the file module. Let's run ls temp and then testdir. And yes, we have our test file 3 in there. And that shows you how we can change directory when we're running the command module. This is really useful for things like if you have a Ruby application. One thing that you'll run if you have a Ruby application is bundle install. And this is going to install all of the gems that you've got in your gem file using bundler. And what bundle expects you to do is run this in your applications directory, not in the root directory. So for, ex for example, if we had our application at SRV my app, this is going to run as expected. We're first going to change to that directory and then bundle install is going to be run inside that directory. So yeah, this is a very, very useful argument and uh, I use it pretty frequently. Another super powerful feature of the command module is the ability to set environment variables directly on the Ansible task. To demonstrate this, what I'll do is I'll replace this file path with two environment variables. I'll replace it with target dir forward slash file name. Now these environment variables won't be set by default, so let's use the environment keyword to set them. I'll set target dir to our temp directory, and I'll set file name to test file 4 so we don't override any of our previous files. I'll run this playbook against both of our hosts and what I expect to happen is that our test file 4 is created in our temp directory using the touch command. It succeeded on both hosts and let's go over and double check. If we run ls tmp on our CentOS machine, you can see that yes, test file 4 has been created alongside all of our previous files. If we do the same thing on Ubuntu, we can also see that test file 4 is there along with all of our previous files. Another really powerful thing that you can do is combine this with what we studied in the previous section, which is the arguments. If we set the args here, I'm going to set the chdir argument, which is going to change the directory, to our target dir. What we can do here now is remove the target dir from our command, and we should expect this to run in the exact same way. I'll change our file name to test file 5, so we can prove that it's actually working. If I rerun this playbook now, this should create a test file 5 in our temp directory and we can go over and run ls temp again on Ubuntu and we can see that yes, test file 5 has been created along all the previous files and on CentOS, the same thing. Test file 5 exists with all of our previous files. This is a really common pattern. Uh, for instance, if you were running a Ruby application, let's say you wanted to run Rails assets precompile. This is a really common task on a Rails application to precompile all the assets. What you'd like to do is change to the application directory. So the target dir in that case would be something like SRV my app. And then we wouldn't need the file name. We would just remove that. But what we'd like to set is the Rails environment. So that's the Rails env environment variable there. So let's say we wanted to set that to production. That would now run the Rails assets precompile task inside our target dir with the Rails env set to production. So this is a really common and very, very powerful pattern. The last thing I'd like to show you how to do is how to run multiple commands in a loop. We're going to be using the loop keyword, so I'll set the command to item, and I'll set the loop keyword, and let's flesh out the commands we'd like to run. I'd like to run touch tmp test file to create a test file. Next I'd like to create a directory using mkdir, I'll create temp test dir, and then finally what I'd like to do is to move the file that we created originally, temp test file into our test directory, so temp, temp test dir. If I run this playbook now against our hosts, what I expect to happen is first the test file to be created, then the test directory to be created, and then finally we move the test file into the test directory. And I can see that that succeeded against all of our hosts. Let's check with ls, I'll ls temp. We can see that we only have test dir, which is expected. Let's ls the test dir as well. We can see that we have the test file inside. So that's how you run multiple commands using the loop keyword. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. I really hope you found that tutorial useful. If you have any questions at all, please hit me up in the comments and I'll gladly get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.